okay if we can have all our students return to your seats we'll get started in just a moment okay good morning good morning thank you thank you of course I don't have to tell you what a crowning and proud moment this is for us especially here in Gaston County particularly here at East Gaston High School to have such a profound person with us this morning and I'm not going to labor time I'd like to introduce to you since playing ball in East Lansing Michigan for the Michigan State Spartans winner of the 1979 NCAA basketball championship when Michigan State beat Larry Bird in the Indiana State Sycamore. One of nine children. Also at the same time, the 1979 first round draft pick for the Los Angeles Lakers. The 1980 Rookie of the Year in the NBA, also world champions in 1980 for the Los Angeles Lakers, went on to win a championship four more times with the Lakers. NBA great, Hall of Famer, all pro, all world, business entrepreneur, currently part owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Still shares with the Los Angeles Lakers on TNT NBA tonight. The young man that used to tell Kareem, my dude, Jabbar, for a rebound. Get up, Cap. Play with James Worthy, Kurt Rambis, Byron Scott, the Hall of Famer, all world international on his own marketing of movie theaters, brand. Burger King franchises, the legendary, proud to have him at East Gasoline, Irving Magic Johnson. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. First thing I want to say. First thing I want to say, God is so good, and <clears throat> what a blessing it is to be here. I'm excited to be here, so we first had, we, oh, thank you, love you too. Let's, let's first thank some people who are allowed me to be here today, and who, first of all, suggested when we flew here, probably about three or four weeks ago. He lives not too far from here, his property, and then he, he said, that's a high school that I really care about because I told him I wanted to come here and speak at a high school, and he said, I got the perfect place for you. But if it wasn't for him and his love for and passion for this community and this city and for you, I know I wouldn't be here. So Mike Fernandez is my business partner, my great friend. We says thank you. Come on, give it up to him because he deserves a lot of the credit here. We want to also thank your, your principal for allowing me to be here. Let's clap. Yep, yep. We also, the superintendent, the mayor, Everybody, all the teachers that work here that who are so unselfish, let's give it up for the staff that work here and that teach you every single day. Very important. So what we're going to do first is just allow you to understand that shh, I was first born Irvin Johnson, not Magic Johnson. And I grew up six sisters, three brothers. And when you think about it, I grew up very poor. But I didn't have poor dreams. I always knew I wanted to play in the NBA. And I also knew I wanted to become a businessman. 
But the only way I could achieve that, I had to educate myself. So when I was at my high school, just like this, I made sure that I got, got a good education. And that's what's important for all you young people sitting here. Because all your dreams, everything that you want to accomplish, you can do that through education. You know, I was sitting there, I used to practice, so, and when you have to practice till seven, eight o'clock at night playing basketball, and you get home late in a family of 10, you already know what's going to be left in terms of food-wise. So a lot of times, it might have been a piece of cornbread sitting there waiting for me, but that was about it. A lot of times we had the peanut butter, but not the jelly. A lot of times we had the sugar and the water, but not the Kool-Aid. But at the same time, that did not stop me from achieving my goals and dreams. I, at that time, Michael Jordan didn't have sneakers. So at that time, Converse was the sneakers of choice. Some Dr. J's. My family was too poor to afford Dr. J's. So I had to go to a store called Woolworth and I wore the $1.99 special tennis shoes. But it did not stop me from being the best basketball player. So the guys who wore the $25 sneakers, that's equivalent to the Jordans today, $200. While they might have had those sneakers on, they were still not the best basketball players. And the reason I told you that is because a lot of times we think what we wear is going to make us. No, the clothes do not make you. You make the clothes. You know that your parents, shh, you know your parents can't afford that. So don't be sweating them about trying to get you something you know they can't afford. Because I had three shirts and two pair of pants to wear to school every single day, the same rotation, every single day. But I was still the coolest kid in school. So remember, the clothes don't make you, you make the clothes. That's very important. And then last but not least, make sure you dream big. If you want to be like our President Barack Obama, he grew up poor. Now look where he is. All the people that you idolize in the hip hop world, the athletic world, the sports world, whatever it is, they probably grew up the same way you grew up. But they just worked hard in school and at their craft and they became great. The same thing that you can do with your goal and dream, you just got to work hard at it. And make sure while you at this school, you get a quality education. That's what's going to set you apart. Now here, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do after I wore those little hot pants with the Lakers. And we had a lot of success, right? Five championships. We went to the finals nine times in 12 years. That's amazing. Nobody's ever going to have a run like that anymore. That's an amazing run. God blessed me with some sense that I knew what to do. Once I did get a little money, I knew what to do with it. Instead of making sure I, I got material things, I just invested my money. Because I wanted to make sure I became a businessman, but I also wanted to give back to my community. 
All my businesses are in urban-based cities, urban-based communities, so I can hire people who look like us. That's why I've been successful, to go back, hire people, give them a job, give them an opportunity, that's important. So here's a kid from the ghetto, right? Grew up poor, played for the Lakers. Now I'm telling the world I want to be a businessman. Everybody said, no way you can go from the basketball court to the boardroom. So I like challenges, I really do. And I like people to tell me I can't do something. Oh, that fires me right up. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go show them. So I did my homework and research. First thing I did, I said, man, minorities, African Americans, we like to go to the movies. Latinos, we love to go to the movies but there, there were not no theaters in our community. So I went and started Magic Johnson Theaters and built theaters across the country. And I remember this like it was yesterday. The guy from Sony, the food buyer, he says, uh, I tell him, I said, how many hot dogs do we have for the opening of my Los Angeles theater? This is Monday, we can ready to open the theater on Friday. Oh, you got enough hot dogs for a month. The same amount we get in our community, you're gonna get in your community. So I opened the theater on Friday. On Friday night, I sold out all the hot dogs. Wait a minute, I supposed to have enough for a month. I sold them out in one night. Because what he didn't know, because of course she was Caucasian, what he didn't know was minorities, African Americans, Latinos, we don't, we're not gonna go to dinner in a movie. Where are we going to have dinner at? I can't hear you. At the movies. That's what he didn't understand. So I'm out at the supermarket buying hot dogs and buns that Saturday morning. Because we're, we do things different in our community. That's why I decided to put my businesses in our community. Because I understand what we like and don't like. So after we were successful at the theater business, I went calling Starbucks. Starbucks, now this is really great here. Starbucks had no stores in urban America. So I said, you know what? Minorities, we like coffee too. And I went up to Seattle, talked to Howard Schultz about putting Starbucks in our community. And sure enough, we he came, to, came down to L.A., saw my, how I managed my theaters, and the beautiful thing was Waiting to Exhale with Whitney Houston, that movie was coming out on that same Friday that Howard Schultz came down to see me. So I had about 5,000 black women wrapped around the corner to come see this movie. And he was just blown away by the fact that there was that many women ready to see this movie. We got inside. It was unbelievable. Then we in, entered the theater where my biggest house, 500 women. And what was great was I tried to catch him to tell him that we go to the movies a little different than everybody else. But it was too late. And the beautiful thing was every woman in there thought they knew Whitney Houston personally. So they started talking to the screen, dump him, why are you still with him? And Long story short, Howard Schultz pulled me out the theater and said, I never had a movie going experience quite like this. You got the deal. I built 125 Starbucks around the country and all in our community, urban America, they were unbelievable. So why am I telling you this story? Kid grew up broke in the neighborhood. He achieved his first goal, which was the Lakers. His second goal was to be a businessman. First person, black or white, to own Starbucks outside of Starbucks. Wait a minute. I grew up the same as you. But I worked hard, I got a good education, and I can't stress that enough to all of you. Make sure you get a good education because you can achieve anything you want. Okay, so we're going to have some fun.
So now I'm allow you to ask me some questions. Just raise your hand. Uh, whatever you want to ask me is fine. As well as here and to the right, same thing. All right, young lady, stand up. Because I got to be able to hear her. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Was I disappointed in the Lakers that they didn't win a championship last year? Um, of course, I was disappointed. But, but, LeBron James and Miami, they were, they were too, they were incredible. You got, I, I, well, no, I got to I gotta give them credit because they were on top of their game. And uh, that story goes to a lot of you guys. Hold on one second. Because that's a good point that you guys should understand. And that's this. Here's this young man who had been just crucified for not winning a championship, right? They go to the finals the year before, get beat by Dallas, and he had a choice to make. Am I going to go back to the gym and work on my game, or am I going to stay the same as a player? LeBron James said, you know what, I need to improve. So he started working on his game to improve. So it's the same thing you have to do sometimes. If you know you don't read well, then you have to work on that. Back in the day, I had a reading problem. When I was in seventh grade, I was only reading at the fourth grade level. And when the counselor pulled my coattail, I had to go to summer school every single year to catch up to my uh, uh, grade level in terms of reading. But I worked on that to improve that. So give LeBron James credit for saying that. Yeah, go ahead and clap for the brother because it's, it's important. For working on his game to get better, and he didn't take it as a negative. Look, don't take things as a negative. If you need to work on your writing, your math, make sure you do that. And I want to I wanna tell us one thing, too. It is cool to be smart. Okay, don't, 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 don't get that wrong. It's cool to be smart. So, all right? Okay, over on this side. Yes. I, I would say that I would say that both of them are first of all great program, great schools. Uh, I went to Michigan State, so at first I'm a Michigan State fan. But at the same time, you got to give both football programs credit because both of them guys, both FSU and Florida, are great football programs. And And, and we want to wish them the best in, the, in, the, uh, in when they go to the BCS on both programs. But I'm a Michigan State fan. All right, you got one here? All right. Go ahead, stand up. <laughs> Say it real loud. What is it? Was I dis that's a good question. Was I disappointed when I left the NBA? Was I disappointed? Well, first of all, let's remember one thing. First of all, HIV and AIDS is serious and it's still running rapid in our community. So make sure, young people, when you think about the choices, right? It's about choices. Also, too, young people, So when you think about making those choices and those decisions, understand what the consequences can be, okay? So make sure we know uh, a lot about HIV and AIDS. Was it difficult to leave at that time? Yes, because I was in the prime of my career. We had just lost to Michael Jordan and the Bulls uh, in the finals, and we thought we would be playing them uh, a number of times. Uh, it didn't happen. It was difficult because I wasn't ready to retire, but I'm glad I did retire because I wanted to be here a long time. And the blessing is God has blessed me for 22 years.
still be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a, it's, it's a blessing. I'm here. I'm healthy. My wife is great. Got three kids. Got two grandkids now. Everything is great. Yeah. So, thank you. Who got the next one? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead then. All right, go ahead. Give, give me the first one first. <laughs> what did he say? Oh. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, what? Where's the game? Oh, oh, oh. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a throw. Wait a minute. Hold on one second. Shh. I'm a, I'm a throw it back to you. Shh. Who do you think gonna win? 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 All right. It's my touch. Okay, cool. All right, got one on this side. All right, go ahead. She asked me, how do I think that basketball has affected the black community? Uh, well, first of all, basketball uh, uh, affecting our community is great because, look, when we grow up, whether it's black, white, no, no matter what, we like sports and entertainment in our community. That's what we grow up being. Our parents pass that on to us, we enjoy it. It's a way to escape everyday life because I love sports to escape everyday life, everyday life pressure. Shh. Your parents love it because they go out and work hard every day to provide for you to also mortgage payment, on and on and on. So when Saturdays and Sundays or Fridays, whatever the day comes on and the sports is on, we get to unwind, release, enjoy, holler, scream, be a coach. Why Kobe took that shot and didn't hit it? Or why Dwayne Wade? Whatever it is on our mind, we get to escape. So I'm glad that sports is in our, our world. And the same way with entertainment, I'm glad it's in our world. Now, last but not least, also it gives us a way to go to be a professional, uh, whether it's a professional football player, basketball player, baseball player, whatever it is, it allowed me to go and make a living for myself and my family. So I'm glad that African Americans play football, basketball, baseball, box, whatever we, it is that you do, because it allows us to go and also have a living at the same time. Last but not least, Young people in here who play sports, stand up. If anybody plays sports, stand up. All right, now. One second. Okay. All right, one second. All right, so this is it. You, you got to make sure that your life one second. You have to make sure that you get your grades and also don't depend on, hey, I'm a go pro. If you get your grades, then you have something to fall back on if you don't achieve your goal. That's why it's so important that you get the good grades. If you make it, that's a bonus. That's a bonus, but make sure you get the grades, the education to go along with your incredible athletic skills. That's so important. Yes, ma'am, and then I think they're telling me to come on back. Yes. Somebody heard me repeat it for Oh, what role models in my life? Okay. Oh, what role did religion play in my life? Shh. Well, first of all, Religion has always been in my life. My mom, you know, 
We grew up going to church every Sunday together as a family, Baptist. We had, after church, we have dinner every Sunday. We had to eat together as a family. God has blessed me to be healthy, strong, even today. Uh, my wife, Cookie, is the most incredible woman. She runs her Bible study group and all that. She's just amazing. So religion has always been a part of my life, and I, I strongly believe in 22 years dealing with HIV, I'm standing because God has blessed me enough for me to stand. So. All right, so what I'm going to do before I go, because they want me to go, but I'm going to come around, get your, get your cell phones out, I'm going to just come right, don't come down, just, just take the picture from there. All right, just take the picture from there. All right. Remain in your seats. I'm just going to come around to every section. Just snap them from there.
if I could have your attention for just a moment, for just a moment, to you, uh, Irving Magic Johnson, we'll be forever indebted to you for your visit here to Gadsden County. So let's give him a big round of applause. Absolutely. We have a couple presentations and then we're gonna let you go. First of all, this could not be possible if it was not for someone who really cared enough to us to actually sponsor this opportunity. So with that being said, we want to recognize Mr. Mike Fernandez for making this possible for Irvin to be here. Come on up, Mike. I'm going to read this plaque. It says, uh, in recognition of Mike Fernandez for his dedication to the Gadsden County community by facilitating the visit of one of the, the one and only Irving Magic Johnson for the benefit of the high school students of Gadsden County Public Schools. Presented this day, November 29th. Thank you so much, Mike. Give him another big round of applause, if you would. We'll get it. And to you, Irving, Magic Johnson. I don't know how many times I watched the Lakers play and watch you. By the way, where's James Worthy? <laughs> All right. To you, in honor of Irving Magic Johnson, for his selfless dedication to a stronger community and a brighter future through the impartation of his wisdom to the high school students of Gadsden County Public Schools. Presented this day, November 29, 2012. Magic, we love you. Thank you so much for coming. Give him another big round of applause. Oh, well, we have one other presentation from the city of Quincy. Thank you, Mr. James. If I can get my city commissioners to join me, Commissioner Dydell, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Gay, and City Manager Jack McClain. This is a very proud moment for the city of Quincy. You know, we have a lot of famous people from Quincy, including Mr. and Mrs. John Dew, civil rights activist, Destra Jackson, most valuable player of Super Bowl 37, Billy Dean, country music singer, and a Harlem Globetrotter, the former, late Mr. Billy Ray Hobley. But Mr. Johnson, we are indeed, indeed proud to have you here this morning. So on behalf of the city commission and the citizens of Quincy, I'd like to present you with a key to the city. This plaque reads, to commemorate the visit of Irvin Magic Johnson, Jr., we, the city of Quincy, presents this key to the city on behalf of the citizens of Quincy, Florida, November 29, 2012. Use this key for anything. If you use it for the wrong door, our sheriff is somewhere here today, right here beside me. He'll help you get out, okay? Thank you for coming to Quincy, Florida this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hernandez, for bringing him. We really appreciate it.